a larger one here. So we'll just go up like that. A small extrude and then a larger extrude. Then a small one and then a large one. And these smaller ones that I'm making are going to create the nice crease for me. So we'll go small and large and then small. Then when you go to smooth you've got it looking something like that. Obviously if you wanted to create bolts when you select the circle from center tool you want to make sure that you've only got the amount of edges that you need say like six or eight. And any extrusions from that is going to represent exactly what you need. Again, you can actually get these vertices here, and we can just go to the average weld just to close them off. In these particular circumstances, we wouldn't go ahead and actually smooth this out. Let's just get rid of this curve for a minute. But we may just want to finish it off a little bit better than that. So we just select this edge maybe and like that. Always keeping in mind when you're making these things that when you're going to apply it to your model it's going to obviously add the polygon count and how many you've got to actually apply. So if you've got to apply 20 rivets make sure they are really really simple. In this particular case we can simplify this down a lot more but you kind of get the idea the mythology behind all of this. Something extra that I wanted to include in this tutorial was how to actually get this rivet perfectly aligned with the contour with the center hub around this slope. As you can see it's perfectly aligned and it's perfectly placed between each strip of polygons. To do this is very simple. First of all we need to select the hub. I'm going to take the smoothing off of the center here for the moment and we're going to select this tessellation that I created earlier for the middle alpha loop and then we're going to make a curve from this by copying and pasting control and C control and V obviously the Mac has got its equivalent which I'm not aware of once we've done this what we need to do then is just turn the hub off for a minute so we can see that the curve is actually there let's just turn this curve off and bring the hub back and the next thing is we're just going to take a closer look at this rivet. You'll notice that I've actually created an extra set of polygons just on the inside here. And the reason for this is just so we can use it as the orientation of alignment. Now in the utilities tab you'll find a tool called lay on. Once you've selected this you select the polygon that's going to initiate the actual orientation and then we click on to where we want it to snap to. Now you'll find it automatically snaps and aligns itself to the actual slope of our center hub. I'll just show you that again. Lay on, click on polygon, and it's aligned itself. Finally we want to select validate and then what you should see is your tool handles perfectly aligning with the bounding box. If they shouldn't be you just might want to look down the giant dynamic geometry and then just close that dynamic geometry because that's what can cause this sometimes. Now that we've done this I'm just going to align this roughly to the center of this line And I'm going to turn on the curves tool, or 
the curves selection that we've got take off the hub and I'm just going to rotate this around so it's roughly in the center it has to be rough so I'm looking at the actual vertice here that I want to just get roughly in line with the center this is if you might be picky and getting it absolutely spot on spot on as we need it anyway next thing is going to select this geometry, this rivet, in the utilities tab click copy and support and in the properties for copy and support I want to select this center point and then holding down the shift key I want to lock it to the center point on the curve then click on the curve now that we've done this you might find that it might be one of these other types of orientations but it's number four that we want we can click on validate turning off this curve now and just bringing back our hub we now see that every single rivet that we've made perfectly aligns all the way around you can then apply your smoothing as need be. And finally when we're happy with that we can create some image geometry just so we can close off this back to make it look as so there's something inside and then place this within the cavity that we've created on the actual base of our model which will be here so going from what we've learned previously in the other chapters we can see that this box will be made purely from a cube very simple to do again you might also imagine that this actual handle or foot pedal is made from a circle from center in exactly the same way as I've been showing you. Just so that I'm not skipping on anything, let's just show you the example of the foot um, pedal there. Circle from center, dragged out. And I'm going to just tessellate it a few times. Selecting the loop of these here and using the double edge tool, which we've looked at previously, or the chamfer, and then just scaling this inwards gives us this effect. For the end, we are loop selected around the edges quite a small extrusion outwards then a larger extrusion again 